In this episode of You Will Eat The Bugs and You Will Own Nothing and Like It, uh, first lab-grown meat approved for sale in the U.S. Lab-grown meat. Um, I have always thought it was hilarious that um, people wanted to be vegan. Not that, not that they wanted to be vegan. That's not the hilarious part, although it is. Um, that they always try to resemble me. Whatever they do, whatever they make, it tastes just like this. It tastes just like that. Um, the funny part, <coughs> excuse me, to me about it is that um, the, not all of them. There are a lot of them that come at you with a very moral high ground. Like, you eat animals, how dare you? But then when they go to eat their food, they're like, I want it to taste like meat. I want it to taste just like the thing I say is so terrible. And you know what? I don't blame them because meat tastes fantastic. Do I need to eat a few more leafy greens? Obviously. <laughs> but the thing is, I do eat a lot of vegetables. I eat way too many vegetables. But I also eat a lot when I eat. And that's not good. But anyways... Lab-grown meat made from chicken cells cultured in steel tanks can now be produced and sold in the U.S. for the first time. <laughs> On Wednesday, June 21st, uh, two California-based companies, who'd have thought, Upside, Down, uh, Upside Foods and Good Meat, a sub subsidiary of Eat Just, became the first in the nation to get approval from the U.S. Department of Agriculture to produce and sell lab-grown chicken products. The Washington Post reported, Join, Join Biologics, a manufacturing partner of Good Meat, also received approval to cultivate the meat. Good Meat. Not the first time I've heard that. <laughs> God, I'm, I'm in it right now. Um, and then also, a subsidiary of Eat Just, so the, yeah, that's what I, it's always from a moral high ground. Like this is an exact, the glare, oh my glasses, do I, whatever. So yeah, it's always, uh, it's always funny to see that and just from this little bit, you know, it's, it's bringing it up again, just in the name of the company, just putting it in your face. The process of making lab-grown meat, also called cultured or cultivated meat, begins with sampling cells from tissues of living animals, according to the USDA. Collecting the cells typically does not permanently harm or kill the animal, the department notes. The cells are then screened and stored in a cell bank. Cells are later collected from the bank and moved to a large enclosed vessel, often steel tanks. Okay. First things first. begin with sampling tissues from living animals. So this isn't just out of nowhere. These are from an actual live animal. And typically does not permanently harm or kill the animal. Typically, they had to add the kill. It typically doesn't kill the animal. And it typically doesn't harm them. Basically, in that statement, it kind of ruins the whole thing. You're taking a sample from a live being. So you're hurting and taking from this being. Vegans don't even like you eating honey because the bees worked on it. Not because it kills them, but because it was their labor. And this is okay? Um, Yeah. And it also, animals are hurt in a or sometimes dying from this. But you're going to eat that because it's what? Because it's not killing as many animals? But I thought the whole point was killing animals at all. Like, that kind of gets rid of the whole thing, doesn't it? The tank acts as uh, bioreactors from the cells can rapidly... Uh, wait. As bioreactors where the cells can rapidly multiply. Manufacturers supply the cells nutrients... Uh, services for the cells to grow up. Wait. Oh, services for the cells to grow upon and protein growth factors that cue the cells to differentiate into muscle, fat, and connective tissues like those that are found in a regular chicken. The USDA statement explains 
The once differentiated and ready for the harvest. <laughs> the cells are collected from the tank and prepared using conventional food processing and packaging methods. In 2019, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration and the USDA's Food Safety and Inspection Service established a regulatory framework to ensure that lab-grown meat is safe and truthfully labeled. As part of this process, both Upside Foods and Good Meats cultivated chicken products have been assessed and confirmed to be safe for human consumption. On Wednesday, both companies receive a grant of inspection, the final USDA seal of approval needed to bring their product to market, NPR reported. For now, the lab-grown chicken won't be found in any average grocery store, and it will be pricey. Upside Foods is partnering with Dominique Kren, owner of the three Michelin-starred restaurant Atelier Kren, who will serve the cultivated meat at Bar Kren in San Francisco. Similarly, similarly, Good Meats product will be served in a yet undisclosed restaurant of celebrity chef Jose Andrews, uh, Andres, uh, one of the company's board members, according to NPR. Following this initial rollout in fancy restaurants, Dr. Uma Valete, up, Upside founder and CEO, told Yahoo Finance that the company aspires to eventually beat the conventional prices of traditional raised meat and foresees the Upside products will be at parity uh, with conventional meat products within 15 years. In addition to the fact that cultivated meats are slaughter-free, proponents of the products tout their potential environmental benefits compared with conventional raised meat. However, some scientists, including a team of, uh, at the University of California, Davis, has pointed out that cultivated meat doesn't necessarily produce fewer carbon emissions than conventional livestock farming, in part due to the energy-intensive process currently required to make the gro uh, grown, uh, growth medium used during production. Uh, on top of this, it's not yet clear how companies can foreseeably scale up production to make lab-grown meat available for general consumption. Yeah, well, that last little part there. First off, I want to laugh a little bit here. I'm feeling good, feeling a little frisky. So, the people who are the most invested in it, literally partial owners of this company, are celebrity chefs. It's going to be too expensive to just send this out to a grocery store, so you would have to order it at their fancy restaurant and if you want to try this good meat you're gonna to have to go to this restaurant um so bringing all this together people who are already rich and wealthy living in san francisco who want to be the bourgeoisie so to speak they want to be um the, the upper echelon of society. They are, a lot of them already view themselves this way. They go to these fancy restaurants where they serve you a piece of chicken this big with a little drizzling on it for $150 and call it gourmet. You know, it, you have to be sophisticated. In order to have this good meat, you need to be sophisticated and come to this restaurant. There's only going to be a couple restaurants in the world that have this good meat. And eventually, it'll probably... I don't know. I mean, if they do scale it up, they say 15 years. I mean, it's just like anything else that's going green. I'm all for going green if it's worthwhile. You know, uh, in order to put solar uh, fields out there, like, with, you know, they, they literally have to clear out acres and acres and acres to put these solar panels up because and they also get super hot, like the reflecting light. I know they're absorbing, but it's very bright and shiny out there. They put them in these giant fields, and they literally heat up the area. It's like baking in an oven, and all the plants underneath them die. So, like, you do, you have just swaths of land that aren't being cultivated. So, like, you know, I know plants, you know, even corn, like, they still take in carbon dioxide, spit, sp you know, spit out oxygen. They still do that, even if you're, you know, if they're being cultivated in the same place over and over again. Take out some of the chemicals, like farming and destroying the natural area that's around it. Farming, I mean, that's not, doesn't seem too bad in the long run. 
This is completely getting rid of all of that just to put a solar field up. That doesn't even do that well. You can't like store the energy when it's good. Like, that's the problem. Like, this stuff isn't advanced enough yet. It's getting there, but it's not there yet. And maybe in 15 years, they'll be able to make it cheap enough where it's worth it. I'm still not eating it. I'm sorry, but, like, half the shit that they say is good for you has stuff that, you know, can cause you cancer. And in 10 years from now, you know, oh, yeah, you're not supposed to do this or all that. Yeah, that thing that we said was good, yeah, it gives you cancer. Oh, yeah, that processed sugar or that fake stuff that we keep on saying is, you know, it's fine. Yeah, oh, all those energy drinks you were drinking. Yeah, uh, turns out people are dying of cancer because they drank those energy drinks. Like, we might fall into that category too. But, you know, it, it, are they take are they taking, like, what are they called? What they were, uh, people were freaking out about, um, the babies, the, the, the cells, the ones that are like in the, that turn into other things, whatever those cells are called. I can't think of the name on top of my head, but like they were freaking out because you had to take them from, there was a multiple ways they were doing it, but they were taking them from fetuses that were boarded. They were taking them from like spinal taps or something like that. And then um, a new way that they, I read that they were going to possibly do it was literally period blood. Like taking out, the, oh, stem cells. Taking out these stem cells from these different types of things. And it's been a huge issue. Like stem cells can do ma amazing things for us. But right now, the way that we have to get them is not worth it. Slash is unethical. Whatever side it on, it doesn't matter. So like, do they, are they getting stem cells from these animals? Or are they just taking like a whole punch of meat and then putting it in like it then wouldn't it die because this it, you're not just taking meat you're taking cells so like that's my question what is this um but yeah you know it's and the amount of time and effort and money and you know you have to keep it up and running and keep everything optimal it's still running on power like you're, you're just trading one carbon footprint for another it's just always how it goes. And then, and then these people are going to be the same ones that are like, we're doing something about it. You know, we're, we're changing the world. See, we're green. And it's like, no, you're not. Teslas are not green. I don't mind Teslas. They're impractical for the kind of stuff that I do. And, you know, I don't want to break down the middle of Alabama because, you know, there's not a charging station within 30 miles of me or something. And, you know, uh, the, the they're unethically sourced. Like, you have to go and, like, they're, these mines that they're getting, the, you know, these rare earth elements from are killing us just as fast as anything else. So, I hope this goes well. I wouldn't need it, but it's a step in some direction, I guess. And it's also funny, because the people who will preach at you for how good they are are the same ones that are doing way worse things than you're probably doing. Like, comment, subscribe, like if you like this video, uh, and I will see you on the next one. Stay wild.